Ah. Hello, I'm Bree, and welcome to my one bag. This is such an exciting day because I have looked through so many videos on the internet trying to find what other women find when they go and travel around the world, especially when it's only in a 40 liter bag and I haven't really found anything. So I hope some of you find this useful and reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or just curious about what I'm taking. But I hope this gives you a good idea of what you can take on your trip. To kick it off, this is my chosen one bag. This is the Eagle Creek 40 liter Global Companion. And as far as I know, they actually stopped making this bag because Eagle Creek was sold or acquired. I have no idea, but I can tell you that I bought this one for two reasons. Number one, it was on sale. It was 159 bucks at my local REI and I figured why not. Reason number two, the hip belt. Hip belts are superior for many reasons. They just make it so much more comfortable to carry a bag. I tried many bags out there that didn't have the hip belt and they only have the regular straps and it was just a no-go for me. So this was it and so far, so good. Okay, I'm gonna jump right in with clothing because it's the most important to me, it's probably the most important to you, and if you're looking at traveling for an extended amount of time, you've probably done more research on clothing than anything else like me. So I'm gonna give you my true and honest review about things that I brought with me, things that I left behind and or shipped back, and also the things that I ended up buying on the road. Item number one. Probably the thing I use the most are long flowy pants because it is so hot out. You just need something that's a little bit easier to wear around that's comfortable, maybe not as showy as short shorts or something like that. And you can also utilize them as sweatpants in a hotel room or, ho or a hostel. These are my long and flowy. I bought these in Verona, Italy. They were 25 euros and they're super cute. You can dress them up or dress them down. Like I said, you can wear them as sweatpants or honestly just going out and grabbing coffee in the morning. It doesn't really matter. I I tried to find long flowy pants in the US and it was just not a thing. And I think it's because we have air conditioning there and in Europe, you really have to dress appropriately for the elements. And when it's hot here, you just wear less. You don't necessarily go home to an air con every day or step into a store or a coffee shop with air con. Never expect it. Number two comfy short. I got these because I wanted something easy to wear around a hostel or just my own hotel room while I'm editing. These are Viore. If you haven't heard of Viore, you probably don't live in the United States and you're probably not very active in the REI world. Everything that they produce is really good quality. It's so comfortable. It is just a little bit expensive, but give it a shot. The next time you check it out at REI, just buy something and just tell me you don't love it and those will change your life forever. Short number two. These are Athleta. Um, they're comfortable, they're black, they have zip pockets. I don't know if I necessarily love these, but I do need them for the moment only because um, I don't really have all that many shorts that are short and comfortable with zip pockets because you don't wanna get pickpocketed going out in the cities here, it's just not worth it. The downside about these is they make me feel and look a little frumpy. I'll probably ditch them when I find something better, but I haven't found something better that checks all the boxes yet. So for the time being, gonna keep these. Also, Athleta in general, amazing company, love them. Flowy pant number two. I picked these up in Switzerland on our trip. They were eight francs. They're not that cute. Um, they have pockets, that's cool. But for the most part, I don't really like reach for them as the first thing that I need, but they were the first flowy pant that I picked up and I needed them when it was so hot in Switzerland. Uh, they're also sheer. A lot of the pants that you try to find on the road are gonna be sheer, so just be aware of that. It's just a thing, nobody really cares. So just do what you need to do to feel comfortable in the elements and in this case, this is what I needed at the time being, though I'll probably ditch these when I find something better or decide that I don't need them anymore. Sozy flowy shorts. Love these. They were 60 bucks. The benefit about these is that they look like a skirt, but they're actually shorts. They have with pockets on the side. They even come with a little tie belt to make it look a little more cute and dress it up better. The only thing I will say is that in windy environments, people can see your hole behind. So I try not to wear these on windy days and you probably should too. Jean shorts. I picked these up in Munich. They were 18 euros. I just wanted something a little more casual and a little more sturdy. So I ended up grabbing these guys, but they're super stretchy. And I'm really glad that I did because they're probably the thing that I wear most outside of my leggings and flowy pants. I actually considered not bringing jean shorts and I didn't initially, obviously, I picked these up. This kind of gives you that sense of casual style and makes you feel, for me, a little bit more at home with what I'm wearing outside of elephant pants and shorts. Sometimes you just want something a little easier to mix up for your outfits. Leggings, 
I started off with two pairs of Athleta leggings. I shipped one home because it was just too hot. The times that I use these most are on travel days when I want to be comfortable, uh, when I'm on my period because you just want to feel a little more protection with that. And also just bumming around the hotel room if it's a little cold. I kept one pair. Um, I wish I had room for two, but I just didn't. And with how hot it is here, it wouldn't have made a difference anyway. But I will say if you're going to travel around the world, the one piece of clothing that you will need for bottoms, in my opinion, is leggings. So in total, that's six bottoms that I have give or take because if I find something better I'll probably ditch a couple of these but I just can wait and see what happens tops now you can see I'm wearing a green tank top I actually bought this in Italy as well at Zara in Venice I just wanted something with a little more color because I have always been a firm believer of black on black on black however it does get a little hot after a while and also you just start to feel like you look the same in all of your videos. Well, videos for me, some of you are not taking videos, but I felt like I kind of had the same outfit, so I kind of wanted to mix up a little bit. And also this was only eight euros. It's cheap, it's sheer-ish, but it gets the job done and I'll ditch it if it starts to smell or, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted something that packed down to be really small and that I could use for fashion reasons. Now I have two frumpy filling gross shirts. Ladies, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're on your period, you're bloated, you're feeling fat for the day, or you just want something comfortable. I have two of these shirts because that's how important comfort is to me. Number one, I got this at Athleta. I think it was 25 bucks on sale. It's just super cute and it's comfortable and you can also turn it into a gym shirt if you really need to. Number two, if you've watched Jeff's packing video, you know that this is the Herculean, but this is the women's edition. This shirt is so comfortable. It packs down to nothing. It never smells. And in general, it looks super cute with pretty much everything I have on. I highly recommend this shirt. It's a little pricey, but it's completely worth it if you're planning on doing some extended traveling. Off the shoulder. I don't really know what to say about this. It's black. Again, it's off the shoulder, so you can do a lot with it in terms of your outfits and how they look. Uh, I got this at Kohl's maybe 15 years ago. I have no idea. I just have always loved it and it's it, it works for what it is. It's not the best shirt in the world. It's certainly not the best quality, but it does what I need it to. And it's also really great for the gym. Tank top, can you guess where this one's from? It's Athleta. Really love this company, by the way. Athleta, if you watch this video, please sponsor me and give me discounts please. But this one has a built-in bra, which is key because I have three bras on this trip. So when I'm interchanging them and needing to wash some, I wanted to have something else to change into. So I have this guy. You can dress it up pretty easily. Again, it's black, so it goes with just about anything. I'm a huge fan of it. Now I will say I unfortunately lost one of my primary shirts. It's from Viore. It was their crop top t-shirt. It was heavy, zero breathability, um, but I loved it. And it was super cute and it was very comfortable. And we don't remember where we lost it, but I hope to get another one soon. But I think that would only happen if somebody brought it to me in Europe or Asia because they don't sell it over here. Oh well, swimsuit. Again, I've done some shopping over here. So I bought this in Venice maybe. Um, I wanted a different swimsuit top because the one that I had originally bought from Billabong, it just wasn't sitting well. It wasn't that comfortable and it was kind of digging into my neck. So I figured I'd do something just a little bit different. This was 25 euros. It's cute. It'll get the job done. If I really need pads with a dress or something, I could also use this. So I'm not mad about it. Swimsuit bottoms. What can I say? I wear them in the water. They're nothing special. They're cute. So I'll keep them. Bras. So I have two actual bras I have with me and then one built into the shirt that you just saw. And one of them is, I think this is from like lovelyunderwear.com or something. I needed something that didn't have a hard pad with wiring and that would also be able to be clipped in the back for crop tops like I'm wearing today. And I also wanted something I could use as a sports bra. I can do that with this. And in general, it's just easy to pack down. This is why I didn't want wiring. So you can get it pretty much into nothing and it's fine. The other bra, again, Buori. Love the company, I'm wearing it right now. It's just comfortable, it sits right, it doesn't dig into my shoulder and I can use it under pretty much anything. A dress, a sheer top, it looks good all the time. Anything you can get from Buori, it's an awesome company. Underwear and socks. So I have maybe six or seven pieces of the actual underwear. No, I'm not gonna take them out of the bag, but I will tell you that they're from Victoria's Secret. All of them are thongs, lace, whatever else they're made out of. They're simple, they're cheap, they pack really small. And the thing is, if I were to lose them or it gets destroyed, 
I'm not gonna be heartbroken over it. You can find cheap underwear anyway, so I decided to go that route instead of very expensive things. The thing I did spend money on though, however, was period underwear. I have four pairs of period underwear because I just need a little extra support in knowing that I'm going out, I'm not gonna have an accident. So this was something that I spent money on um, a decent amount. I think each pair was about 30 bucks. You do the math. What they are is they're just regular underwear that you can wear throughout the day. These have a built-in pad. So I have two of the really thick types, but they also come in thongs. I have two thongs and then two of the thick types just in case. A lot of places around the world don't really sell tampons, which is what I use to manage my periods. However, uh, they do have pads. I just wanna know that I'm feeling a little more supported if I'm only having access to pads. So that's why I decided to splurge on these. They don't pack down that great, but for peace of mind, I'll take it. Socks. So I only bring two pair with me because most of the time I'm gonna be wearing sandals anywhere. We're in hot environments a lot. So I brought these for the gym or just whenever it's gonna be necessary with hiking. But for the most part, I didn't wanna waste space considering I could just buy these anywhere around the world. So I have two darn tough socks. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Don't bring more than two. Last clothing item, a buff. A buff is good for many, many things. I use it mostly for my eyes as an eye cover when I'm trying to sleep. Sometimes you get stuck in places where you're trying to sleep and it's just a little too bright from either the AC lights, um, the light outside in the case of Iceland, or in general, you just need it to be a little bit darker than, than you would have it in the place that you're sleeping. So this would go around your eyes. So you can use it as an eye cover, a hairband, sun protection, karate band, or really anything else that you can do with it. I can't think of any at the moment, but. I'm I'm sure you can all get creative out there. My bag of many things. So I have kind of a pharmacy, random thing, laundry. I don't even know bag full of anything. Granted, some of these are located throughout my big bag at any given time, but for the most part, I keep them organized into a little Eagle Creek packing cube. So this is my dry sack. I'm just gonna use it just in case I'm out and about and it's raining or I'm going paddleboarding. I wanna bring my phone and make sure that it's safe. Um, you can use it for anything. I know that in one of our videos, we used it for laundry. I don't know how much I'm actually gonna be using this for laundry, but it's nice to have the option in case it comes down to it and you just need something washed and you don't have access to a sink or a washer. So I'll keep it. Laundry. My setup is a little different because I was actually gifted these by my sister before we left. These things are awesome. They pack flat and there were 60 of them. So it saved us a decent amount of money doing laundry while we're traveling. This is just fabric softener. I know I'm so bougie. I need fabric softener. I don't really understand the point of like scratchy towels or clothes. I know it's a very European thing, but it's just not for me. So I carry these with me. Um, there's only like five or six of them. So I throw them in when we do a big wash, but when they run out, they'll run out. I'll probably not get more, but I just wanted to use them up while we were in Europe. So that was the case with that. I also have these small laundry washes from CU Summit. They're good. They're not great. I would use them more for spot washing because in terms of doing multiple things in a sink, you're gonna need like 20 of these. They just don't do much by themselves. So I'll keep them for the time being, but when they run out, I'm not gonna be that sad. A sport. I got talked into this by Jeff. He uh, made it sound like we're gonna be running into many times where they don't have utensils and we're gonna be really, really thankful that we pull this out of our bag. I don't think I've used this once, but at this point I've carried it this far, so I'm gonna commit and I'm just gonna take it on the rest of the world trip with me. And I'm gonna be really excited today that we actually get to use it. I'll let you know when that is. Ibuprofen. We have these tiny little pill patches that we bring along with us pretty much everywhere that we go. Ladies, if you have really extreme periods like I do, it's no question that you're going and traveling around the world with these. I have three of these, uh, the other ones somewhere in my day pack, but I have used these pretty much every single time I get a period and I use about half of the bag. So it's super crucial. It's something so small too. I just didn't want to buy it around the world for a couple of months. And I decided to bring them because the bags were so small. Melatonin, it's self-explanatory. I have a hard time sleeping and they're strawberry flavored, so why not? Noon tablets. You can get these in any REI and probably a couple pharmacies. We're big fans of Pedialyte, especially when it comes to extreme sun exposure. It's not fun to deal with, but when you do have sun sickness, you're gonna want one of these. So we started out with four, now we're down to three, and we use them also when we go drinking because that's what you do with Pedialyte. So allergy pills. Sometimes I have really bad reactions to new foods, so I only brought a couple of these bad boys. It's Zyrtec, pretty basic stuff. Period. Let's talk period. So. I know a lot of people out there recommend bringing the Diva Cup with you when you're traveling. I have one. 
I wanted to bring it, I wanted to love it, but I just couldn't justify it. Why not? So in terms of water quality around the world, I didn't necessarily feel comfortable with washing my Diva cup in the water and then having to bring soap on top of that and also wipes. Uh, most of the time when I was in Asia back in 2016, backpacking with my best friend, I found that there weren't very many sinks nearby toilets that you could easily clean them out in. Also, it's just very uncomfortable in public. And not only that, I had to carry wipes and the soap with us. That would take up more room in my bag. And again, with the water quality, it just didn't make sense to bring it. So I'm more of a tampon slash pad girl. Um, this will not be the case when I get back to my life wherever I end up living because I do really like the Diva Cups. It just didn't make sense to have that with me around the world when I could potentially get a UTI. So I feel like I'd rather bleed through my pants than have a UTI in a foreign country. And I know both of them sound bad, but for me, I don't want to deal with going to a foreign doctor and trying to figure out if I can get an antibiotic and then, I don't know, being in pain for a couple days. So I just want to take the tampon route, which is what I'm gonna do. In some countries, you actually cannot purchase tampons. So again, that's when the pads are gonna come in and the period underwear. So I'm gonna be set at all times. My nano sack. So Sea to Summit makes some really, really awesome products that pack down into tiny, tiny things. This one, did I need it? Not necessarily, but I kind of wanted it because it's just so small. And sometimes when you need a backpack, for groceries or if you wanna go shopping and you don't have a bag because you do get charged for bags most places around the world with the exception of the state. Sometimes you just need an additional little backpack. So that's why I got this guy. Decently big, fits into anything. I haven't used it yet, but I have a feeling that I will once we get to more Airbnbs and we can cook and go shopping and etc. The Matador towel. If you're traveling and a woman, I need you to do yourself a favor and go get a travel towel that packs down as small as the Matador that you can use for your body or your hair. This one's actually pretty good sized. So I use it for my hair because it's microfiber. And I don't know if you know this, but you're not supposed to put regular towels on your hair because it makes it frizzy. I already have enough problems with frizz, as you can see. So I decided to go with this. I've used it pretty much every single place we've been on this trip. And when we go to the beach or go to a pool, I'll always bring it with me just because you don't want to be stuck without a towel. I highly recommend the products from Matador in general. Again, if you watch Jeff's video, you know what big fans we are of Matador. This one in general though is one of the best travel towels I've ever used and I've used more than a dozen. So check it out. My day pack. So I am a huge fan of PackSafe. In general, when I travel, when I do anything, I always have security in mind. I don't think it's worth losing something over just because you forgot to zip it or because you weren't aware of your surroundings at all times. So I went with the PackSafe. What I carry in my pack safe most of the time is just a couple things. Number one, travel pillow. I know this is probably so extra for everyone out there, but for me, I can't travel without it. I have been to Europe more than a couple times now. The chairs are just unfriendly. They're super uncomfortable. It doesn't make for a good night out drinking or going and eating at new restaurants with your family or your friends. I just wanna be able to sit there and enjoy some of the places that we're sitting at. Um, and you can't do that when you're sitting in a tiny plastic chair in Asia or on a really awful bench in Germany. So I actually got this at REI and they have more than a couple options, but I wanted something that was a little smaller than your average pillow. So technically this is a sit pad. You just pop it out, pull it up. Easy peasy. Ray-Ban sunglasses. I have had cheap sunglasses my entire life, but right before we left to travel the world, I told myself I was gonna get some pricey ones and see if they were actually worth it. And let me tell you, they are. These things are so nice. I take them with me everywhere we go. The only fear I have about these is losing them or breaking them. But overall, I would say it was definitely worth the price. Small things that I need usually when I'm out and about in the city. Number one, hand sanitizer. Anybody that knows me knows I'm kind of a germaphobe, so I go through a lot of this. And that was pre-COVID, so I carried this everywhere that I go. SBF chapstick. In general, please take care of your skin, people. It's not worth it to not wear sunscreen. Just do it every day. As a native Coloradan, I would do this every day anyway. Just protect yourself from the sun, even your lips. Ibuprofen. This is the third bag. You can see how much of it I've used, quite a bit. Um, just for headaches, hangover, feeling bad in general, I always keep it in my bag. 
a lock. Sometimes at train stations or somewhere else, I would say, especially the gym, you need to bring your own lock. This one's so small that why not just bring it with me wherever I go? So that's why I have hair tie. With hair as thick as mine, you cannot not have a hair tie with you at all times. It's necessary for anything that you're doing. I always have one on my wrist usually, so pop that on. Makes it easy to carry and you can use them for anything. In my front pocket, clips. I have been in many nasty bathrooms in my life and I don't mind them. However, I do mind putting my bag on the floor. So I always carry my hero so that I can just clip it to the top of the stall or if you're sitting in a restaurant and you don't wanna put your bag on the ground, you can just clip it to the edge of the table. This one is just in case the other one fails or I forget it, so I carry two clips. Clearly you can see how important this is for me, so I always have two. Now, in general with my pack safe, I usually carry it on the front of me when I have my big bag on my back. I can actually pack this in my big bag, but most of the time I choose not to. And the reason that I don't is very me. It's so I can have access to my hand sanitizer at all times. Most people don't carry two backpacks when they're backpacking. However, I just don't mind just because it's small anyway, so toiletries. Now, I'm gonna be very transparent here. I have two bags worth of toiletries. I know it's a problem and one day I'll solve this problem. Um, and by me, I mean we, because Jeff is gonna have to carry some of my stuff because I just can't live without most of this. So I'll do what I can to get it down, but I'll probably just stay with two bags worth of toiletries. This is my first toiletry kit, Eagle Creek again. Apparently I'm a big fan of this company and I never realized it. It's been an awesome bag, it packs a lot. I really haven't had any issues with fitting additional stuff in with the exception of this whole other kit, but that's mostly me and not the bag. Okay, so what is in my big green bag? Toothbrush with one replacement head. Headband, shampoo and conditioner. These are actually awesome, I would check them out. The company is Viori. I get them mixed up with Glory. It's one of them, it sounds the same, just look it up, you can find them, but they smell amazing and they're really good quality. Shower cap with replacement, travel mirror, Q-tips, pimple popper, exfoliator, makeup. So subtle beauty is something I asked for my birthday for and I didn't really get too many of them, but for what I have them for, it'll do the job. Um, they're a little pricey though, but in general they pack super small and it's better than full size makeup. Hairbrush, razor with two replacement heads, nail file, acne pads, a necessity. Band-aids, only three. Whitening strips. Hair clips, more hair clips. Makeup brush, pretty cool. Travel friendly, good quality too. Hair ties, concealer, mascara, lip gloss, face powder. Didn't want to bring a full thing, so I just kind of dumped it out into this and it works okay. More lip gloss, tweezers and small razor, and about a dozen floss picks. Shoes. Now I only have two pairs of shoes. Pretty obvious, one sandal, one sneaker. I don't know, they are just the most comfortable, the most durable. They're a little pricey, both of them. Birkenstocks and Adidas Ultra Boost, but so far they've lasted and they've been super comfortable the entire trip, so I don't regret it. Last but not least, tech kit. Headphone, charging cube? I don't really know the name of this, but whatever. Converter, battery pack, earplugs, chargers, iPhone and Apple Watch, aux cables. That's pretty much it. So that's it. That's the bag I chose for our two year trip around the world. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, drop them below and don't forget to like and subscribe.